Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to another day of Color Craze, which I'm combining with Series 13 of Christie's Beautiful Life. And today's color inspiration is a beautiful close-up of a lollipop, I believe. And it's got so much of the bright colors in it. I thought it was really awesome. And then our sketch today is from Mel Walkden. So I'm going to go ahead and be using the inspiration of the tag on my layout, an oversized large tag, not just any tag. So I'm going to start out with this black piece of paper. I know it looks like I've got a lot of the layout done there. I really don't. I just know I want to use that title that says Silly Boy. I want it across the little pennant flag that those ducks are carrying at the bottom and I know this is kind of a different kind of paper for me to be using but um, we are going to be using paper from this collection for Kit Conspiracy next month uh, we being MK and I and we had some pieces that didn't make the cut for the Kit Conspiracy kits and so we are using those uh, as whenever we want and as, as they um, as we feel they are useful because uh, we don't want to leave them stuck in our stash. But uh, the Kit Conspiracy stuff is all still set aside. And if you don't know what Kit Conspiracy is, it is where we take a different collection each week and we create as many layouts with it as we can. This year we pre-sold kits so that people can play along. Those are no longer available. But if you have something in your stash or one of these kits in your stash or something similar, you could certainly create your own kits. So that is starting in November. Um, this is color craze. We do this every year, uh, in October. We've done it. This is, I think our third year where we have a color inspiration each day and we base our layouts off of that color inspiration. Now I thought these photos were the perfect photos to pair with that, uh, color inspiration because they are baby photos. Um, he is looking in the mirror. I've covered his little face for privacy purposes so that, um, to respect his parents' wishes and not put him online. You can see the back of his head. You can't see his face, and I think that's okay. Uh, but he is playing with this um, baby activity centers that nor when they're little, they lay down and look at the things up above. In this case, I'm sitting behind him, and he's sitting up. He's, he was at that stage where he could sit up, but he was still a little bit floppy every once in a while. So I I would sit behind him just to make sure he was um, stable. And if he flopped back, he had a nice, uh, some someone back there nice to catch him and not the hard floor. So he has found himself in the mirror. And I think that was su super cute and wanted to document that. It's one of the first times that I think he was really reaching out, um, at least with me, you know, sometimes he does these things with his parents and I don't know that he's already done them. And I don't necessarily have pictures of that. Um, they do share photos with me, but I don't always know the story behind the photos. So I'm just using the photos that I took. Um, and also being a scrapbooker, I tend to take maybe, I don't know if I take more photos, but I take strategically placed photos where I can see him in the mirror and I can't see myself and I can't see, um, you know, his face, I can see his face in the mirror, but not in the actual photo. So just trying to be strategic about it when I take photos. Um, and I think most scrapbookers do try to do that as well. Like, you know, we try to avoid getting the trash cans in the background and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but in this case, uh, it worked out well. So I am mounting these onto this black paper. I've got this extra large ticket. I believe I cut that ticket out of another piece of paper from this collection that had a bunch of tickets on it. And I really like that it's extra large and I, it's going to span my nearly four by six photos. Um, the photos are printed on my selfie, so they are a little bit smaller than four by six, but they are um, pretty close. So. Uh, I prefer to use this size. It, it also keeps a nice, that little nice white background or border around the outside. The border is actually a little bit larger than that. I always cut it down because I like them to be a really tight border and look really neat. I had this le leftover piece of black paper that had the whole punch or the notebook edge at the top. So I thought I'd pull that in and create a nice little landing space for these super bright tags that I'm going to add. Now, in the inspiration that um, Mel has provided, it does have an extra large tag. So 
Uh, I think hers is a different orientation than mine, but that's okay. That's the inspiration that I took from her layout. I really liked it, and so I'm going to run with it. When you look at the different um, sketches, don't feel like you have to do the sketch in its entirety. You can pull pieces out of it that you like. You can um, use it as a starting point to get you going. And if you run with it and go off sketch, that's okay. It's not something that you have to do, uh, you know, exactly like the sketch is presented. This is your layout. Do it how you want and let that sketch just be some inspiration for you. Now, if you want to follow it exactly, that's okay too. I have done my fair share of following exactly um, <laughs> in my scrapbooking life. Um, and I still do every once in a while when I, when I just, you know, need a little bit of extra boost to help me get my juices uh, flowing or if I'm super in love with the sketch. So go ahead and do what works for you. Now I did take this layout over to my sewing machine. I added some stitching across that orange heart. I also added some stitching across the rainbow tag at the top and across the tabs on the right hand side. I'm liking the way that that's looking. I'm putting a small piece of baker's twine in the hole on this large tag and then i'm using some smaller baker's twine in the holes on the smaller um, tags i felt like the small uh, baker's twine was too small for the large tag and the large was too big for the small tags um, so that is why i i just have two different sizes for whatever reason i think one is a hobby lobby brand for um, on that black reel the other one is an american crafts on the little white spool and they're just different sizes now i considered leaving my strings showing and that is something i try to do i try to leave them but it never works out you guys it's very rare that i leave all of my strings out um, once in a while on a mixed media product project i might do that but it's like i said it's rare so i went through and i pulled them all my strings through the back and uh just fasten them down with a little bit of washi tape so that they are held in place nicely and I am liking how that's looking. I also did ink my uh, pieces up with some black sit distress ink which I help I hope helps bring in a little bit more dimension and it also kind of tones down a little bit of the brightness. The acrylic piece that you see there is from Colorcast Designs. It's um, It's been in my stash for a little while and so I'm sure she probably doesn't have it available, but you could go to her website and check if you'd like. Um, that is it, you guys. Uh, in case you're wondering about that wax seal, it came with a collection that I got, and um, I don't even know where it's from, actually. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions or comments, leave those down below. Don't forget to check out what MK is doing on her channel for Color Craze today, and check out the playlist below for everyone else playing along with 30 days of sketches so that you can go and get more inspiration. I'll see you guys again on Friday. Bye-bye.